Okay, welcome back guys to the walkthrough for True Hallucinations, the game. And this is part 3, so please check out the previous parts. And better yet, just uh, get the game on my Patreon site and uh, you can play it for yourself and it's much more fun that way. Anyway, let's continue uh, our journey. Terence had just had his first uh, mushroom trip. Well, his first real, real, really big one. And uh, this is our house. This is, we already discovered this part. Um, this is where we came from. And so let's continue here. And I'm just gonna let Terence narrate from now for a bit. I felt the themes of the strange place we had come to crystallize. I felt again the sense of something in the sky, calmly omniscient but closely observing us. We had come to La Chirera with a belief that if life and mind are possible, then the mysteries of the universe might well be inexhaustible. Something very passive yet ever-present was there, elaborating these ideas in our minds, something that we had thought of for some days as the mushroom. Dennis was in a state of continual activity, amplifying his ideas and trying out new wrinkles on us. He retired into a world of very intense activity. He wrote his ideas over and over, the steps to do it and the theory of why it should work. He was spending lots of time alone writing, or he would come back and talk to us. He was on to something very strange. His word pictures caused reality to shimmer and wrinkle at the edges. He was really in touch with this bubbling obsidian fourth dimensional fluid that we were going to bond into a usable tool and end history and go to the stars. Butterflies, so many of them, they seem to be attracted to me. So you might recognize this uh, if you watch my videos or you have seen my documentary, True Hallucinations. This is supposed to be a true story of Terence controlling butterflies. some fun with this. I must show this to the others. Then they must believe me. Mm. Okay, so let's let's do it. Let's show it to the others. Okay, let's show them the magic. don't seem to care about me. Well, show us your little trick, Terry. <laughs> I believe you, bro. Oh god, Terry, it's just getting worse and worse. Your brother is nuts, you have delusions of grandeur, this is a mind in wreckage. Let's just get this over with. Commanding butterflies? Really? <laughs> okay, so it doesn't seem to be working. So let's just, let's just give up. Can we go now? <laughs> yep. Well, that didn't work as I planned. The Tao seemed to have left me once I tried to show my power to the others. Which is a thing that happened many times uh, in La Chorera. 
as Terence recounted. So there's just something in trying to show magic to others that makes it impossible. So, okay, so we unlock this new part of the map. Most of the Amazon Basin is made up of alluvial deposits from the Andes. Natural area is different. A river, the Rio Igarapara, narrows and flows into a crack. It becomes very rapid, then drops over an edge, creating not exactly a waterfall, but a channel of water, Choro means shoot, a flume whose violent outpouring has made a sizable lake. The ground shuddered with the throbbing reverberations of millions of tons of water cascading through the rock walls of the Choro. The feeling of being so small among such sharply shattered stone and so close to the energy of the rapids was eerie and somewhat disturbing. Oh, before we go down. I just want to show you guys what's up here. The horror that the rubber broom brought to the Amazon Indians in the early years of this century has lived on. A memory for the oldest people and a terrifying legend for younger Indians. In the area surrounding La Chirera, the Vitoto population had been systematically reduced from 40,000 in in 1905 to about 5,000 in 1970. So this doesn't advance the game, but I just uh, r try to include as many things that were in the book. On the point of land overlooking the entire surrounding area, the mission had long ago established a small cemetery. Perhaps two dozen, two dozen graves, many of them obviously of children, were eroding away. It was a place touched with sad loneliness, even on a perfect sunny day. Okay, I just wanted to show this. Perhaps you played this game and you didn't see this part, so... Okay. And I believe I didn't show everything. Uh, in this playthrough, so there are things that are waiting for you to discover them. Okay, so let's swim. While Dennis rode, the rest of us swam indolently in the river and washed our laundry under a clear, infinitely blue and empty Amazonian sky. There's a frog there. Okay, so let's let's swim. Some fishes. Hello. Okay. Okay. So you can look around here, but the point here is just to take a check, take a dip, and then if you head back, uh, then it's, she's gonna meet us. Late that afternoon, Dennis came back down to the edge of the lake, looking for me. He found me washing out my tennis shoes. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it had been about 16 hours since the previous evening's episode with the strange sound. Dennis said that the writing exercise had been very useful. Great, and, what's, and so what have you come up with? I'm not sure. I'm very excited, but whatever it is that's causing my excitement is also developing ideas in my mind, in my mind nearly faster than I can write them down. Ideas? What sort of ideas? Funny ideas. Ideas about how we can use this effect. My intuition is that it is related to the psychofluids that Michael Harner reported in the July 1969 issue of Natural History and to what happened to you in Bodnath. Remember how Hardner implied that Ayahuasca Eros vomited a magical substance that was the basis of their ability to divine? This is like that, some sort of translinguistic stuff made with the voice. Matter that is hyperdimensional and therefore translinguistic? Is that what you mean? Yes, whatever that means, but something like that, I suppose. God, why not? I mean, it's pretty nuts, but it's also the symbol system we brought with us running into the shamanic magic that we came here looking for, 
This is what you shipped for, man. To chase the white whale over all sides of ocean and both sides of earth. Till he spout black blood and draw Finn out. Isn't that your rap? The resort to Malvillian rhetoric was unexpe unexpected and not like him. Where, where did he get this stuff? Yes, I suppose, I said. So here we are, very much on the brink of deep water. We are having something like beginner's luck, you know, finding the other so accessible. The mushroom is doing this, or the mushroom and the ayahuasca smoking. It is hard to be sure. There is a lot of synchronistic activity as well. Right. I feel on the brink of something, something tremendous. We must just observe our active fantasy closely and try to write her on what is developing. The good old Jungian method, that's all. What happened in the last few days was too much for Vanessa and Dave. For them, the reality of the dimension we were exploring was seen as a threat. So there we were, a group of friends, sharing a common set of symbols, completely isolated in the jungle, struggling with an epistemological problem upon whose eventual solution our sanity would seem to be dependent. And so, and in short, Dave and Vanessa withdrew from us, withdrew from the excited speculative conversation with their intimations of the possibility of being overwhelmed by the unseen. They took down their hammocks and quietly moved down the hill to the new riverside house. Their departure was friendly. They would spend more time in the water now when I left. The next day, in the dim light of dawn, Ev and I made our way to a cluster of huts about three quarters of a mile away on the shore of the Igera Parana. We found only a small group of people whose best item for sale was a grapefruit-sized green, heart-shaped fruit filled with slimy, vaguely sweet seeds washed in a light purple syrup. It was very inexpensive and since we had come with the expectation of buying something we, we spent 15 pesos and got nearly 50 pounds of this curious food. Without pause, even to rest for a moment, Ev and I returned to the mission and to one ascend Dave's Riverside residence for our breakfast in common. When we had left our hut in search of food, Dennis had been deeply asleep, but he was up now and had apparently gone immediately to awaken one ascend, describe to her his experiences. The interior buzzing sound, the feeling of being possessed, it was all being excitedly told as we arrived at the house. Vanessa and Dave were unmoved by Dennis's excited assertion that some extremely peculiar energy field had been tapped into and verified. At the end of breakfast, I suggested to Dennis that, rather than arguing with people about the nature of the experience, he should go and write down all that he thought, thought about the strange sound that he had made. Then he said he came up with, the ex with an experiment that would prove his theory. Da Dave and Vanessa weren't interested, but Ev and I were open to testing it out. This is Dave. Good luck to you guys. And Vanessa... Please don't drive your brother mad, Terry. <laughs> This is Dave's notebook. I think Terence and Dennis have lost their marbles. They are trying to confront the grandest mysteries of the universe. They do not understand that man was not meant to know these things. <laughs> okay, so let's find uh, Dennis. in the new house here but before that um, let's go up here and we have two choices ahead of us but before that you can go up here and another part of from the book then it's called our attention to the little hands saying that if one thought of her as art then the achievement she represented was immense who could make such a hand only the one who could have fashioned the peculiar world that we had fallen into. And that was? He looked around expectantly, but finding no takers, he delivered his own punchline. James Joyce. <laughs> 
Over the next few minutes he proceeded to make his case, that Finnegan's Wake represented the most complete understanding yet achieved of the relation of the human mind to time and space, and that therefore Joyce, at his death, had somehow been shouldered with the responsibilities of overseeing this corner of God's universe. In this, Dennis was only following Wyndham Lewis, who made Joyce's ascent to eminence in the afterworld, the subject of his novel The Human Age. Jim and Nora, as then is called, the newly revealed deity and his consort, were both in the acting through everything at La Chorera, particularly in the things that Joyce had loved. The little hen as the symbol of Anna Livia Plurabelle of the wake was one of these things. It was Joycean humor that radiated outward from everything in our jungle Eden. So that's again straight from the book, a little Joycean thing. Okay, so Maybe I should stop here because uh, we have two choices. We could either go butterfly hunting or uh, we can uh, we can prepare for the experiment, talk with Dennis and uh, gather all the stuff that, uh, that we need to perform the experiment at La Charrera. So which one do you think we should do next time first? Um, I mean, I think you should just get the game and, <laughs> and play it for yourself because I think this is ridiculous that I'm narrating this whole thing. Uh, but I don't know. So if you haven't yet, check out my new album. Uh, it's out on Spotify, iTunes, everywhere. See you on the longer live streams and uh, thanks for watching bye see you next time